Okay, so here we have the multiple choice question. Um, again, like a lot of multiple qu choice questions, figure out the answer first and then look at the answers and see which one matches. So here we have a case of an epoxide and we're treating it with an organolithium. The organolithium you can think of as basically a carbanion nucleophile. And it's going to, since it's a basic nucleophile, it's going to attack the less hindered side. And so we have two sides that it could attack. They're equally substituted, but A is less hindered because a methyl group is less bulky than an isopropyl group. And when you're looking at hindrance, you're really looking at the carbons closest to the sites you're going to attack. And so this ethyl group is going to add to A. When it does so, it does a backside attack. So there's the new ethyl group. And that forces this wedge was going to the left. Now it's going to the right. And that breaks open the epoxide. And the other stereochemistry stays the same. And H3O plus protonates it. And this is still optically active. So that's after steps one and two. Now PBR3 takes the OH and replaces it with a Br. And it does so by an SN2 reaction. And so since it's an SN2 reaction, you can end up inverting the chiral center. And so it's a matter of figuring out R's and S's. One, two, three. That's an R chiral center. One, two, three. That's also an R chiral center. You can just double check. Yep, R and R. And since it's optically active, you're only going to look for compounds that have R and R. So one, two, three. That's an S chiral center. We don't have to go any further. One, two, three. Also an S chiral center. One, two, three. That's an R chiral center. One, two, three. It's also an R chiral center. So, so far that's a, definitely a possibility. It's got the right connectivity. Then one, two, three. R chiral center. One, two, three. That's an S chiral center. So C is the correct answer.